हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू रीड अवर चैप्टर थ्री अ जंगल टेल सेक्शन वन व्हाट वर द टू थिंग्स दैट तबुक्की सेट टू क्रिएट मिस्चीफ इन व्हाट वे डिड ही क्रिएट मिस्चीफ इट वाज सेवन ओ क्लॉक ऑफ अ वेरी वॉर्म इवनिंग इन द सी ओनी hills when father wolf woke up from his day's rest scratched himself yawned and spread out his paws one after the other to get rid of the sleepy feeling in their tips mother wolf lay with her big nose dropped across her four rumbling squealing cubs and the moon shone into the mouth of the cave where they all lived oh said father wolf it is time to hunt again he was going to spring downhill when a little shadow with a bushy tail crossed the threshold and went good luck go with you o chief of the wolves and good luck and strong white teeth go with the noble children that they may never forget the hungry in this world it was the jackal tabuki the wolves of india dislike tabuki because he runs about making mischief and telling tales and eating rags and pieces of leather from the village rubbish heaps but they are afraid of him too because the bucky more than anyone else in the jungle is likely to, uh, to go mad and then he forgets that he was ever afraid of anyone and runs through the forest biting everything in his way enter then and look said father wolf stiffly but there is no food here for a wolf no said the bucky but for so mean a person as myself a dry bone is a good feast he scuttled to the back of the cave where he found the bone of a buck with some meat on it and sat cracking the end merrily all thanks for this good meal he said licking his lips how beautiful are the noble children how large are their eyes and so young too now tabiki knew as well as anyone else that there is nothing so unlucky as to compliment children to their faces it pleased him to see mother and father wolf look uncomfortable tabaki sat still rejoicing in the mischief that he had made and then he said spitefully Shere Khan the big one has shifted his hunting grounds he will hunt among these hills for the next moon so he has told me Shere Khan was the tiger who lived near the Waingunga river 20 miles away he has no right father wolf began angrily by the law of the jungle he has no right to change his quarters without due warning he will frighten every head of game within 10 miles and i i have to kill for two these days his mother did not call him lumri the lame one for nothing said mother wolf quietly he has been lame in one foot from his birth that is why he has only killed cattle now the villagers of the waingunga are angry with him and he has come here to make our villagers angry they will scour the jungle for him when he is far away 
and we and our children must run when the grass is set on fire indeed we are very grateful to sher khan i go said tabaki quietly you can hear sher khan below in the thickets section 2 father wolf listened and below in the valley that ran down to the little river he heard the dry angry sing song whine of a tiger who has caught nothing and does not care if all the jungle knows it the fool said father wolf to begin a night's work with that noise does he think that our bugs are like his fat wangunga bullocks hush it is neither bullock nor bug he hunts tonight said mother wolf it is man the wine had changed to a sort of humming purr that seemed to come from every quarter of the compass it was the noise that bewilders woodcutters and gypsies sleeping in the open and makes them run sometimes into the very mouth of the tiger man said father wolf showing all his white teeth ha are there not enough beetles and frogs in the tanks that he must eat man and on our ground too the law of the jungle which never orders anything without a reason forbids every beast to eat man except when he is killing to show his children how to kill and then he must hunt outside the hunting grounds of his pack or tribe the real reason for this is that man killing means sooner or later the arrival of man on elephants with guns and rockets and torches then everybody in the jungle suffers the reason the beast give among themselves is that man is the weakest and most defenseless of all living things and it is unsportsman like to touch him they say too and it is true that men eaters become mangry become mangy and lose their teeth the purr grew louder and ended in the full throated roar of the tiger's charge then there was a howl an untigerish howl from sher khan he has missed said mother wolf what is it father wolf ran out a few paces and heard sher khan muttering and mumbling as he tumbled about in the scrub The fool has had no more sense than to jump at a woodcutter's campfire and has burnt his feet said for the wolf with a grunt Tabaki is with him Something is coming up hill said mother wolf twitching one ear get ready The bushes rustled a little in the thicket and father wolf dropped with his haunches under him ready for his leap then if you had been watching you would have seen the most wonderful thing in the world the wolf checked in mid spring he had made his bound before he saw that he was what it was he was jumping at and then tried to stop himself the result was that he shot up straight into the air for four or five feet landing almost where he left ground man he snapped a man's cub look 
directly in front of him holding on by a low branch stood a naked baby who could just walk as soft and as dimpled as a little atom as ever came to a wolf's cave at night he looked up into father wolf's face and laughed is this a man's cub said mother wolf i have never seen one bring it here section 3 a wolf accustomed to moving his own cubs can if necessary mouth an egg without breaking it and though father wolf's jaws closed right on the child's back not a tooth even scratched the skin as he laid it down among the cubs how little how naked and how bold said mother wolf softly the baby was pushing his way between the cubs to get close to the warm hide a high he is taking his meal with the others and so this is a man's cub now was there ever a wolf that could boast of man's cub among her children i have heard now and again of such a thing but never in our pack or in my time said father wolf but see he looks up and is not afraid the moonlight was blocked out of the mouth of the cave for sher khan's great square head and shoulders were thrust into the entrance tabaki behind him was squeaking My lord my lord it went in here Sher Khan does us great honor said father wolf but his eyes were very angry what does sher khan need my query a man's cub went this way said sher khan its parents have run off give it to me Sher Khan had jumped at a woodcutter's campfire as father wolf had said and was furious from the pain of his burnt feet but father wolf knew that the mouth of the cave was too narrow for a tiger to come in by even where he was sher khan's shoulders for and four paws were cramped for want of room as a man's would be if he tried to fight in a barrel the wolves are a free people said father wolf they take orders from the head of the pack and not from any stripped cattle killer The man's cub is ours to hunt if we choose. What talk is this of choosing? It is I, Sher Khan, who speaks. The tiger's roar filled the cave with thunder. Mother wolf shook herself clear of the cubs and sprang forward. her eyes like two green moons in the darkness facing the blazing eyes of sher khan and it is i raksha the demon who answers the man's cub is mine he shall live to run with the pack and to hunt with the pack and in the end he shall hunt you Father Wolf looked on amazed he had almost forgotten the days when he won mother wolf in a fair fight from five other wolves when she ran in the pack and was not called 
द डैमन फॉर कॉम्प्लीमेंट सेक शेर खान माइट हैव फेस्ड फादर वुल्फ बट ही कुड नॉट स्टैंड अप अगेंस्ट मदर वुल्फ फॉर ही न्यू दैट वेयर ही वॉज शी हैड ऑल द एडवांटेज ऑफ द ग्राउंड एंड वुड फाइट टू द डेथ so he begged out of the cave's mouth growling and when he was clear he shouted each dog barks in his own yard we will see what the pack will say to this fostering of man cubs the cub is mine and will come to me in the end Mother wolf threw herself down panting among the cubs and father wolf said to her gravely Sher Khan speaks this much truth the cub must be shown to the pack will you still keep him mother keep him he she gasped He came naked by night alone and very hungry yet he was not afraid look he has pushed one of my waves to one side already and that lame butcher would have killed him and would have run off to the wangunga while the villagers here hunted through all our layers in revenge keep him assuredly i will keep him lie still little frog o oh, you mogli for mogli the frog i will call you the time will come when you will hunt sher khan as he had hunted you as he has hunted you so this was our chapter a jungle tale if you have any doubt or query you can ask me in the comment box below also don't forget to check the description box for the links to the other chapters thank you everyone